I'm Bill. And I'm Candace. And we're, we're the, the disruptors. disruptors. Well, I still think Chris, that we should add this you is, add in. It is, and I'm Chris. And he's Chris. Yeah, it's, there, but, now we got him like in. Like an there, now we're And really, in. we're looking at you, so you're really kind of a forethought. So what you Boy, am I excited. we got a special guest today. You know what? We do. We do have a special guest. Her name is Dion Baldwin. Uh, she does has a business called Video Services by Dion. And you're a great big, huge fan. Oh, I am. You know, I had the opportunity to go in through Facebook and let me look back. No, Facebook and a whole bunch of neat platforms that she's on. And her photography, videography, oh my goodness, it is spectacular. Yeah, but that's not what made you happy about her. Coming. No, it was the beer, you know, bread. The beer, beer bread. banana bread? Yeah. Beer banana bread. I, I had to hesitate well, while Dion, I'm saying Well, welcome to the show. Oh. Thank you for having me here. I'm very happy to be here with you guys. It was so delicious, yeah. It looks so yummy, okay, too. Okay, you're still on the beer banana bread, and we're talking to her now. Yes, right. Well, let's start at the beginning. Where did you get started in this? Well, for food blogging, about 10 years ago, um, I came across a couple food blogs. I didn't realize it was such a big thing, but I thought, well, what a fun hobby. I've got a daughter. I've been raising her on my own. She's 15 now, and so when she was really little, and I thought, well, even if we don't have a lot of money or if we have money to spare, this is something we can just we can always do because we're pretty much always going to eat. So I just started a food blog with her and it started as a hobby. As a I think hobby. That's really neat. I bet that's built a really neat and unique relationship with both of you. It has. I think sometimes it drives her nuts, but she's really good at being supportive and like, uh, she doesn't, she doesn't complain when I ask her to do stuff to help me. And she's, she's been extremely supportive over the years. She's been like my assistant. Assistant. Yeah. Wow. This is a great idea for you and Tom. I don't think so. <laughs> I really don't think it's so. It's a lot of fun. We can talk about that if you want. Well, no, that's okay. We'll move right on. You haven't met Tom. We'll move right on. So what? when you got started into it, how did you get into the actual business of the video and aspect of it? Well, I mean, long story short, when my food blog went from a hobby to a job, I had a lot of colleagues that were super helpful kind of coaching me along. They were farther than I was, and everybody had different strengths to contribute to our little group of friendship. And so one day I met some um, a couple that has a food blog, and they also own a video production company. They put together a few of us in a group and mm-hmm. just decided to teach us to do video. And Great. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. I loved it way more than the photography. The photography is okay, but I would much rather shoot a video than then take pictures. Stills. Yeah. I'll be darned. Yeah. That's very well, interesting. You're highly creative. Yes. Because with the baking blog and, you know, shooting video, taking pictures, I mean, you've got that creative bug. Yeah. And I think that's a wonderful way to for, for expression and being able to capture people right where they're at. Kind of thinking outside the box a little bit. I had to kind of be like that because, you know, growing up, I mean, we had enough, but sometimes I wanted something and I didn't have access to it. So I really had to just kind of work with what I had. And even when my daughter was super young, I had to do that with some things too. And when it came to jobs, if I didn't have enough money and, you know, I couldn't really piece together three full-time jobs. I mean, who has that amount of time? So thinking outside the box was super, super important for us surviving. To really survive. Yeah. How did you get your uh, your sites and everything monetized? How Give us kind of a background on how you actually supported yourself on the Internet. A few different ways. Um, I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket, so to speak. So there's ad revenue on the blog. There's ad revenue on videos. Um, that could improve, but I just kind of did a little bit to kind of have another stream of it. And the big part of it was also working with companies like... Uh, Sabra Hummus and Red Star Yeast, companies like that, that pay for work in either photography, recipe creation, video, and... and So there's a really a good, solid market out there to get involved in as far as monetizing. And the reason I ask that question is a lot of times the people we've had on the show, they're always trying to figure out how to get that revenue stream started. Yeah. Because it's really very, very difficult to really get it going on the internet unless you're 19 years old and you have a pet frog or something... And you know, and you bring it on, and it jumps up and down every week. And Nike says, "Just do it," and sends you a check for ten thousand dollars. You know, right? And that's kind of hit or miss with that strategy too. Well, absolutely. So you've been at for what ten years now? Yeah, about ten years on the about ten years. So you can you can really visualize before Facebook really got to be the the mountain that it is today. Then, and some of these other platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I think the first one I ever saw was on MySpace. 
MySpace. MySpace. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah, back. that, was, that a was a while, while ago. ago. Yes. And I don't think it was nearly as popular as it is now. And I mean, but there's there is more options. And if you can be really creative with it, you know, if you have a service, there's someone willing to pay for it and you can reach an agreement. I mean, totally think outside the box. People can even go to local stores that are, are locally owned mm-hmm. and try to come up with arrangements <laughs> for that, too. And I did um, have some agreements with companies that would pay me a commission like there's a meal kit service that right. I affiliated with so they would send me boxes and I created a video with a review on it and then so for every oh, box right. I sold I would get a commission now as long as I disclose that at the beginning of the blog post or the video and make sure that people are aware of that just posting an honest review I made a pretty decent income out of that that was really That's interesting yeah it was really uh, really helpful and I liked working with the company too that's why I chose them because it really boils down to the personal connection with me I mean there's a lot of big companies out there and I could probably negotiate some things and make some money but I'd rather work with ones that I have a personal connection with that sure. I really like their cause and it goes a little bit deeper than a paycheck you know you bet very true and it gives you a good balance because it's good quality mm-hmm. you're being very picky on the products I would assume that you're representing yes very because it's when I represent those companies, whether it's on my blog or social media or wherever, even if I, we talk like this, it's representing me. So if they're doing something that I don't think is appropriate or it's not something that I want to be affiliated with, then I just sure. don't promote them. I just stick to the ones that I like. And how many clients do you have to have to, to make a living now? Do uh, you have five or six of them that pay you for your different uh, products that you're representing? Or are you kind of mainline down to a major one? Or where are you at? Um, It really depends. There's Uh a couple companies that do like year-long contracts and then some that do like one or two and some might just do a one-off. It really depends. And I do have my food blogs operational and they are still a stream of income, especially with uh, the affiliate income and the ad revenue Uh and the video. But Uh really what I'm focusing on right now is the video services because I really like it. I don't mind working online with clients that, you know, I communicate via email or phone, but I like meeting with people in person, like let's say a business professional or um, a company owner or somebody that just wants to promote something they believe in and sitting down with them and finding out why they like it so much and helping them communicate their inspiration for video to me and then I shoot it for them. That, I'm really enjoying that right now. So that is a big part of what I'm doing now. I think the creative aspect and what I've always in, what I've always enjoyed um, is the individual with the ability to capture someone's essence, and where the you know the camera might be there, right? But they've forgotten, and you're actually able to see that person who for who they are, right? Not with a mask on, because right. I know working with different clients. They um, they get nervous or for whatever reason, and then we work through you know authenticity training. Yeah, and you know we want to see what's what's past the skin. You know all that yummy deliciousness. We want that to come out. Yeah. and capture that so that people are more engaged. Because um, and I think that's what makes an excellent movie. When you look <laughs> at the, I'm sorry, but you know when you look at the difference between you know okay movies, you know, and really the ones that capture you. They've they've captured that person's essence. They played parts that are that either a they've morphed into, um, or that's part of just the fiber of who they are. So um, the heart of heart of what they're trying to shoot, or trying, absolutely trying to create in the movie, absolutely one hundred percent. And video is, I mean, because we're teaching society not to read. I mean, there's the there's the ugly fact. Yeah. So, yes. Yes, you know, we are. <laughs> so we need people like you, right, yeah. that are shooting videos because we don't often read the stuff that's typed in above it. You know, if we Very post true. something like say on Facebook, not reading a lot of what's above it, we're just click and play on the video. Very true. So, what are your uh, suggestions for small business and what they might need in video? I think the main thing that small businesses need to focus on is practicing in front of the camera because when you're not comfortable and you're super shy, like it's like you said, they have that mask on. Mm -hmm. And it can be frustrating when you're trying to pull yourself out and you think, why can't I just be real? But you're not used to being in front of a camera. And I think some of us are really worried, like, is my message going to be clear to everyone else? So the biggest thing I could say is definitely video is important right now, and it probably will be for a very long time, Mm -hmm. but practice. Even if they want to set up their phone in selfie mode and shoot a one minute video every day about what they like the most about the previous day and they just want to throw it in the trash. Practice, 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 practice. I think that is very important. We have clients, I have clients that that's exactly 
what I'll have them do, and they have to forward it to me for accountability. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't care. I want you to pick up your phone. I don't care if you know, you're know you rolling out of bed. I don't care if it's at the end of the day. I don't care if you're on a break. I don't care when. I want you to grab the phone, and I want you to talk into the phone, sing to me in the phone. Do something with video and ship it off to me right. <laughs> for accountability. Yeah. I said, I'm going to trash it. I'm not holding on to anything. We're going to trash it. But we've got to get you really comfortable, and um, there's a whole list of exercises that we have them go through um, to help them get over that that psychological element. Right. Because so, it's intimidating. Yeah. It, it really, really is. is. I don't think people realize, and we have that just with podcasts. I'll have people come back, uh, like the last gentleman, oh, I, I brought my purple shirt on. I, I didn't realize that I wasn't going to be on video. Uh, <laughs> I said, no, this is audio. I've had a lady that's sitting there, and she's doing all this stuff for about three or four minutes. And I finally say, excuse me, are we ready yet? She says, okay, how do I look? I said, I don't know. The microphone won't uh, won't give me any ideas. <laughs> uh, this is audio, you know. And you're right, it intimidates them. We have people get intimidated just by the fact that the microphone's there. Yeah. Because they're scared of their voice, or they're scared they're going to say something that, well, I really didn't want to say that, but... Or is this politically correct? Or am I communicating with my audience? Yeah. So you're absolutely right. Digging in and getting to the core of the individual, and especially capturing them as we see them mm -hmm. in video is so important. So very important. It's crucial. So, Dion, where do you get your inspiration from? Talking with other business owners, really. I mean, seeing things from someone else's point of view, whether it's like looking at other videos on YouTube um, sometimes I'll just be walking around and looking at stuff and I'll just like how I would shoot it or how I wouldn't shoot it and what I would say about it if so, if I were like shooting a video of where I'm at and talking about it and just kind of play through it in my head a little bit so mm -hmm. when my mind wanders. So I just just pretty much, I don't know, like looking around and, you know, just seeing things from other people's point of view. Who is your number one, if you could um, have one uh, person that's your inspiration who is that one person for video or in general just in general for you just you on a personal level oh my goodness um and I have to pick one person well my mind instantly went to video when you said that because I thought oh man you know me shooting video this must be about video right but um the people that got me started in video Lenny and Denise um they own the production company Full View Media and they're also food bloggers they were and continue to be inspiring because if I watch like their Instagram stories and stuff, it's real life and I think they're pretty funny. So they see things from a different point of view and I liked their coaching style because they never said anything was right or wrong that the students were doing, but they're like, okay, but you, you like this is something you could do different or that light is distracting or don't do this over here because this whole living room had a lot going on and we're looking at that and not you so they were they were really creative with it there was no one way to do it and they just just the way they see things is different it's inspirational and they got me started awesome. in this whole video thing so yeah they're a huge inspiration for video and just in general and I imagine it's kind of fun to look outside the box to figure out, okay, I can capture them this way. What if I, if I bend it a little bit or change the lighting or the backdrop or do a different type of a, a, a video a, a lens change, you know, or all those things. I, I think it's really nice because if you're creative enough, you just grow in that. And if you can bring the person out as they are and then add those touches to it, that's what makes the difference between a video, as far as I'm concerned, and a YouTube video where somebody just sits there and smiling and, you know, yaks away or looks like he does, you know. <laughs> You're talking about those self videos. Though. Yeah, those those, some of those are so, mm -hmm. so rotten. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's a lot of them that are good. I want to go back, though, to the really important part of the video, which is your subject. Mm -hmm. And they come in, and you say that they ha they sometimes wonder if they're getting their message across. Yeah. And do you find that people that have kind of a confusing message and they're not able to get it across is because they're not clear themselves on what their message is? I think that's a big part of it, yes. In fact, I've got a client that I just shot for. wasn't even really sure what they wanted to 